Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the third lecture of chapter 11. And in this lecture, we're going to discuss Kepler's law of equal areas. All right. So suppose that in time delta t, the position vector moves from r to r plus delta r. Then the area swept out by that position vector as it moves is half the area of the parallelogram with sides r and delta r. And the full area of the parallelogram parallelogram is the magnitude of r cross delta r. And this was a problem at the end of chapter one for, the, for understanding the geometry of the cross products. So this is the picture we have, and you can work out that uh, geometry very easily again. So the change in area as the position vector moves, the area swept out, is one half r cross delta r. Now, we want to look at the rate of change of that area. So, we divide del the changing variables by delta t. That would be delta a and delta r. And look at the limit as delta t goes to 0. Delta r over delta t as delta t goes to 0 is 1 half r cross v. All right, that is the time rate of change of the area, sometimes called the aerial, A-R-E-A-L, velocity. So again, this is looking a lot like an angular momentum, but let's evaluate this quantity in our polar coordinates. So R, the position vector, is magnitude R times R1. And v, we've computed the velocity vector for this before in these polar coordinates in the plane. We just now do cross products, and we we know how to do that in this case. And we're left with r squared theta dot multiplied by k, perpendicular to the plane of motion. r squared theta dot, again, that looks an awful lot like that expression that we derived earlier directly from the equations of motion, that new constant of motion. So we see that r squared theta dot is 2a dot, but that's a constant. And therefore, we have the vector a dot, which is magnitude a dot times k, is 1 half r squared theta dot multiplied by the vector k. And this is something we call the aerial velocity. And this was some, something Kepler proved first in the mid-1600s. All right, this expression is going to come up a lot. r squared theta dot multiplied by m or a half or things like that. So, we're going to explore the equations of motion in, in more detail, and I want to derive a new form of the equations of motion in the next lecture. So that's it for now. See you next time.